The first thing you're probably going to see when you spawn in is this absolute beast. I mean, just look at it. I don't think I've ever seen a singular building in a game with that much weight. I'm talking, I love my body and wouldn't change it for the world kind of weight. It's a shopping mall equivalent of a boss in a Team Ico game. Similar to your dead childhood pet, the eeriness you feel when you see it is multiplied tenfold when you're inside it. Battlestate clearly have a knack for atmosphere and they pull out all the tricks for interchange. First of all, the sound cues. You've got the escalators, one of the most distinct noises on the entire map. As soon as you hear that sound, you know exactly what's up, and soon they will too. The astute players will be able to tell individual sounds for the floor. This one's wooden, this one's wooden with glass, this one's tiled, this one's tiled with glass. This is a wooden floor again, but it's slightly different wood. This is metal, and I think this is just bugged. The alarm makes you feel like you're in a CIA torture program, and needless to say, as on the nose as it is, the kids' game music and playhouse, like your creepy uncle, is a great touch. The sound is used in a lot of places as a deterrent. You can smash right through here, but you better believe everyone in the Western Hemisphere now knows where you are. This has some of the best loot, but people will be able to track your location faster than that friend from college who you've been ignoring for 10 years, and if this is getting too annoying for you, you can turn it off. But be warned, everyone now knows where you are, and similar to how we treat veterans from World War II, they've got a funny way of thanking you. Hearing gunshots echo down the corridor will never stop being scary, and when you're approaching and can hear them from the outside, it will fill you with a sense of dread that can only be compared by speaking on any social issue. Like a brony organising the MLP collection, the attention to detail is on another level. Do you really have that much pony merchandise? You have no idea. The main theme being around risk and reward. A common theme with Tarkov maps, but specifically spotlighted on interchange. Around here, you basically have the Tarkov equivalent of putting all your money on zero. You have a 1 in 36 chance of making it out big, but most of the time you're just going to lose it all and have to explain to your wife why you're so angry. Scattered around, you'll find several back areas. These can be used to safely navigate the map, but with a time cost. Sure, you could hold shift, close your eyes, and give yourself a 10% chance of making it up here alive. Or you could spend the extra 5 minutes travelling to here, and then you've got at least a 20% chance. The mall itself is split into three distinct levels. The underground car park works as a safer route to travel around the map but comes at a loot cost. The ground floor of the mall has loot all over the place but comes at the cost of your life. And the top floor is good for getting an advantage on your opponent, but it requires you to use the death collectors. One of the reasons I love Interchange so much is because of how the loot is positioned. You can go for the holy grail or you can just skirt the outside and hit the loot caches. A lot safer, but don't count your blessings just yet because don't forget, you're still playing Tarkov. As well as the smaller shops from within the mall, you have the three big players. Ollie is half of PC World stock, probably why the wires are so expensive. Here's an idea, let's literally put no loot in here. And this is Havol. Wait, I'm reading the map right now. It says Havol, but I'm so sure this is Goshen. You can find enough food to feed Nikado Avocado here for at least a few hours. Like your first go at speed dating, you're going to run into a lot of doors that won't open for you, but instead of paying for them to open, you need to take a trip to the power station. Located as far away as physically possible, it leaves you with a few different ways to play it. Either you wait for some good Samaritan to do the work for you, you get there late and lose half your brain, or you get there early, embrace your true scummy self and just wait the raid out. Once it's quietened down, you should be good to go. If you're made of solid gold or maybe just a lucky fuck, like starting your own sexual trafficking ring, this is where you can make some serious money. Opposite tech, you have medical emicon, spawning the highly sought after Ledex. Not that you'd know anything about that, because that hatchet runner just took them all. This is the gun shop, consisting of bulletproof windows and airlock door. If you can survive having to unlock it in one of the worst positions of the map, you'll have your chance to get trapped in here by that force call. This is the safe room, which, like your canned full English, can only be opened in the burger shop toilets. If all of that wasn't enough for you, you've got Pool Sharp Mall Carp 3. This time it's personal. Killer is one of the most deadly bosses in the game who somehow walks the line between fucking everything in sight and adhering to Sharia law. You'll know you found him because he'll be screaming at your corpse, and if you think you can just run away, you've got another thing coming. In some twisted game, Ragman will task you of killing this guy a hundred times. It might be hard to believe, but I've actually done this quest before, and yes, it was so worth it. If you do manage to take him out, you could have a shot at a red key card, although like the female orgasm, I think this might be more of a myth. Here you can extract with a friendly player scab, but mostly you're just going to be trying to dodge bullets from AI you can't see. Like that girl on Instagram who has that star sign in her bio, the hole looks promising, but it leads you to a heap of problems. You can get up on this tent, but it might be nice to get to know the other PMCs before you raw dog them, and even though this shows you like half the map, I swear I've never seen a soul out there. At night, Interchange has the ambience of a child's beauty pageant. In other words, it's a fucking horror show, from the well placed mannequins that just won't stop rising my blood pressure, fog that doesn't really make any sense, and all of these dark spots that you're find me hiding in, it's a recipe for the scariest thing since China cloning those monkeys. All I'm saying is I hope you brought your flashlight and a spare pair of underwear that's not soaked in piss.
All jokes aside, Interchange is clearly a map that's very well thought out. From loot placement to extracts to secret passages, this is truly a map brimming with character. It fills me with a feeling you can't get elsewhere. I can't be the only one who's had some of the most intense fights of their Tarkov career here. There's just so much versatility. You'll start engaging in one area and before you know it, you've lost your opponent and now they could be anywhere. After spraying an entire 60 mag into the last dark room you saw them run into, it turns out they dipped through the back door and now they're behind you. I was worried you'd come away from this video having learned nothing of value, so I saved the most valuable information till the end. Channeling my true blue-haired self, this one's called Every Toxic Masculinity Spot I've Ever Used. Pipe is when you're feeling really fucking cruel. Crane jump if you just don't care about anyone at all. The conductor if your heart is rotted to the core. Glass wall, instead of getting rich, you're just gonna get poor. Tech jump for when you've got more than two hours to burn. Face down escalator, now you're really starting to make me concerned. Embush, if you've got something really seriously wrong with your head. Goshan Eternal Darkness, and instead of playing, you'd rather just go to bed. Emma Kong Guardian Angel, ruin someone's day. Hole in the wall trucker, I think you might be gay. Lick. Like you speak it, you know? No, nothing crazy, guys. Nothing wild.